Hi, this is Dr. Payer recording from Tucson, Arizona. Hope life is treating you well and thank you for watching this clip on graphing or rational equations. Rational equations, whenever I talk about graphing, often students feel like a deer in the headlight. Well, hopefully, after watching this clip, you'll see that it doesn't have to be that hard. Okay, so we're going to break it down into uh, three distinct steps and following those steps, giving you a process, you can always easily, hopefully, graph any rational equations. The step one is we're going to take a look at domain, i.e. what x cannot be, or it gives you the vertical asymptotes. We'll explain why it gives you a vertical asymptotes. Okay, and then we're going to take a look right around the hole, right? around what I call a hole, what happens. Okay, so let's take a look. We have this function that's equal to 4x plus 3 and 2x minus 1. Okay, so x cannot be half because 2x plus minus 1 equal to 0, and that gives you x equal to half. So x equal to half is a bad x. Okay, basically, if you look at the graph, x equal to half become a whole, literally. That's one x you can't take. Okay, and then what we're going to do is say, what happens at f of equal to, say, 0 0.51? Half is really 0 0.5, right? Okay? So what if x equal to uh, 0 0.51? And what happens if it's just a little bit smaller than half, f point 4.9, okay? And then as you can see, if you substitute in there, if x is equal to 5.1, f becomes a positive big number. Let's just say positive infinity, it's just, just the big number. If x is equal to 4.49, and you substitute back in the equation, this one becomes a really big negative number. Okay, so basically we're saying, look, if x is close to 0 0.5 from the left, you have a negative number, and if it goes from positive side, it goes a positive number. Okay, so, all right, we're going to take all the step one steps on the side. Step two, we're going to take a look at the vertical asymptotes. Okay. The easiest way, easiest way to look at the vertical asymptotes is this. When you take a look at the function itself, if it's head heavy, it sounds funny, but hey, funny makes you remember things. So if the uh, power of the numerator and denominator matches, or if the top is even heavier than that, then this little person tips over. Okay, when it tips over, what you do is use long division to figure out what's the horizontal. I got this one wrong. It's not vertical. It's horizontal asymptotes. Okay, we're going to take horizontal asymptotes. So over here, this is a pretty easy. Uh, division here, minus 2, we're going to minus this whole thing, so this one is positive 5. So basically we're saying, look, f of x, the given form is this, but we can also rewrite it as in 2 plus remainder of 5, 2x minus 1. Okay, this form gave us a lot of advantages, because if f x is approaching to a big, huge positive number, you can see that f of x is getting to a little bit bigger than 2, but you know, you can't get to 2, but it's a little bit bigger than 2. If x gets to be a really, really big negative number, and then f of x is getting to be a little bit smaller than 2. Okay, so this definition here basically give us the, as you guessed it, horizontal asymptotes. So what happens when x is really big? Here's y, here's 2, okay? So when x is really positive number, we, we have a little error here to say, look, if x is really, really big, I'm a little bit, little bit above 2, but I could never cross 2. If x is really, really negative, then I have a little error of saying, look, I'm going to be a little bit below 2, but I could never cross 2 either. Thus, a horizontal asymptotes, okay? Almost there. Step three, we're looking for special points. 
for our case, f of 0 is equal to minus 3, and that's good enough. So basically, we have the curve roughly, I'm sketching it over here, okay? The joint point here is half and 2, okay? So, and then I have the curve goes swoosh down like that, and then the other half goes like that. So all I did is I combined what I got from step 1 and step 2 and combined them together and got the curve. Okay, so let's draw the curve a little bit better on the second page. So once again, step one, we figure out what the hole is. And let's take a look at the domain. Step two, we took a look at the horizontal asymptotes. Okay, so back over here, the domain says, look, x cannot be equal to half. Okay, so here is our hole because x says I can't be a half. And then y says, look, when x is really, really big, I'm always approaching to 2 here. Here's y-axis. So join the point is half and 2 over here. Right? And then a special interest point says, look, if x equal to 0, my y value is 3 here. Okay? And combine all the things we found earlier, there's a little error here, there's a little error here, and there's a little error here. And this little error here. This is the step two. Okay, this is the step one. And then here's the step three. Okay, now combine all the things together. Well, now you have this beautiful curve. Let's see if we can draw this out. It comes down. Swoosh. Okay, here's one branch, and the other branch goes like way here. Okay. It's pretty easy to graph, and here's a function of um, 4x plus 3 and 2x minus 1. All right, that's how we handle it. It's, it's easy. It's tedious, but it's easy. Once again, from Tucson, Arizona, this is Dr. Pan making learning math fun and easy. Well, at least trying to. Please comment or thumb up if it has been useful to you. Until next time, have a confident day.